comes Final Jeopardy. U.S. geography is the subject, and the blue will be revealed. Well, another night, another whole lot of nothing for me to do. Welcome to the Final Wager. I'm Keith Williams. The last three of our Power Players games were all locks, so I think Thursday's was too. I didn't have too much work last week. Oh well. And then I had a teacher term before that, that wasn't too much work. And then Buzzy was just... Well, actually Buzzy was locked in some interesting battles. Again, there I go with that dumb word, interesting. Some really fun battles for me to analyze. He's got this one locked at 1980, 8200 for Heidi, John, 3800. Uh, I guess you could be forgiven for thinking it was still Power Players Week because of John's introduction as the was it the secretary of assistant secretary of the Colorado Senate? Pretty cool job, it sounds like. Although a lot of power that can be uh, misused, whether intentionally or accidentally. Uh, yeah, I don't even know why I'm picking up a pen. I have nothing to do. Um, Heidi can have 16.4, so Buzzy can wager at most so 3399. U.S. geography. That's a nice category. I'd go for it. Uh, what do we have there? It was nice, and Buzzy's last daily double wasn't bad. I liked it. Uh, if he gets it right, it forces... Back in DC? Oh, okay. Uh, it forces Heidi to get the last clue if he's right, and even if he's wrong, he uh, will still take the lead into final unless he misses, and Heidi picks up the rebound. I was hoping he might go a little bit bigger, but for a 2,000 clue to possibly give up the lead in return for a relatively low chance of uh, getting a clue correct and locking it up, then yeah, I'm all for that. You could have gone a little bit smaller, but whatever. Uh, I enjoyed the Lucky Charms clue only because I went to the store earlier today and I actually bought some Lucky Charms. So they're my favorite cereal, and uh, sometimes I like to have a, a little treat, if you will. Speaking of which, I can eat whatever I damn well please, because I run so much. And I uh, had a good uh, time in multiple ways running the Brooklyn Half on Saturday. It was a lot of fun, and uh, it was a nice day, even though it was a little humid. The uh, route is always fun, and there are always lots of great people lying in the course, cheering, volunteers with water and uh, Gatorade and other things, and a lot of people come together to put on what turns out to be a great event. I, this year's event was the largest half marathon in the United States, possibly in its history, or maybe in the world, I don't even know. Probably not in the world, but 27,000 people actually finished, and even more registered, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, okay, looks like we're almost ready. Ooh, wheel around the world again, huh? I like watching the Georgian version only because I don't know what the characters are. Ooh, we got a lean back, that's fun. Uh, <laughs> there is something that made me laugh at tonight, though, so I just remembered, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that we're after we play this clue. With one of my favorite categories, USGR. Hey, mine too. Here's your clue. Of the eight states that touch the Great Lakes, it's the smallest in area. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York. Okay. Either, either Ohio, Indiana, or Wisconsin. I'm going to go with Indiana. It's a little longer than Ohio, but it's oh, definitely narrower. We begin with you, John McKay. You had 3,800, and you came up with which state? You picked Ohio. No, that will not help you. It'll cost you 1,200. It didn't matter what he wagered. He just got to cap hers at, what, 600? She had 8,200, and her response was incorrect also, New York. Cost you only two hundred dollars, so it looks like you're going to finish in second place with eight thousand. As we come to Buzzy Cohen, he had nineteen thousand eight hundred and what is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the correct.
correct response is Indiana. I thought that would cause problems for you guys. That was a tough clue. I got lucky with that. Our champ risk nothing. He picks up 19 I just imagine that in between tapings, Alex Jacob somehow got in touch with Buzzy Cohen and said, you got to start messing with people a little bit more. So I can't remember what he did in the intro. I know he had brushed off his shoulders before. I think he just kind of whipped his hair back or something tonight. But definitely messing with people. Definitely messing with Trebek, which no one ever calls him Trebek to his face. I mean, I do all the time, but if I saw him on the subway, I'd say Mr. Trebek. Or, no, I would say Mr. Trebek. That would be it. Uh, so the funny thing I remembered was that Alex pronounced the name Snooky. <laughs> um, and a very smart move by Heidi to not uh, give away why she was laughing. I assume that's why she was laughing and not because uh, she's embarrassed to watch it. I don't know if she watches it. It's not embarrassing. People got to have some sort of outlet for junk TV. Uh, but yeah, Snooky. It's a good thing I didn't think of that too much before Final Jeopardy era, so I definitely would have gone for Wisconsin or Minnesota. Minnesota. Snooky. <laughs> That's not even right. Okay, uh, I'd like to get some more notes. Ah, it doesn't really matter. I'm guessing the unrevealed lucky clue. I was hoping that uh, something about Kismet would show up, either the musical or just the, I think it would be an Indian concept. Or uh, the dice game that was a direct ripoff of Yahtzee that we had when I was a kid. And it had colored dice. I guess that was the big difference. Where the tips were different colors depending on what side. Either green or red or black. I think the opposite sides were those colors. Anyway, right, this is long enough for a game that didn't have any math. Just me blabbering on. We'll see you tomorrow right here on The Final Wager.